This is the MLW Radio Network. Welcome, everybody, to the Mind of the Meanie, your weekly peek into the world according to former WWE superstar and ECW original, The Balloon Meanie. We'll cover wrestling, music, movies, sports, and lots and lots of useless knowledge all contained in the mind of the meanie. I'm Josh Chernoff, your tour guide, and he is the blue meanie. Meanie, what's on your mind for episode 51? It's 5150 time! Nice. Nice little Van Halen reference. Kind of working backwards. This is episode 50 after 51. 51.50. So, <laughs> I see what you did. I get it. Digging Speaking your shirt here. We are. Uh, remember, we're on yeah. fight right now, so everybody yeah. can see. You got a nice shirt there. Um, Doc and Gordy. Doc and Gordy. Miracle in violence. the words of Perry. Yeah, in the uh, words of Perry Saturn on ECW Hardcore Television. Doc and Gordy. Doc and Gordy. But yeah. Probably, you know, people are like, what's your favorite tag team of all time? And I always go, like, British Bulldogs, Midnight Express. But, dude, Doc and Gordy were pretty underrated. Yeah, they're, you know what? It's any, there are so many amazing teams, amazing wrestlers just in general from that time period. And I think they become uh, underrated in history because yeah. of the fact that they were right before the big boom of, you know, cable and all that. And, of course, that was WWF was leading the, the way with that. So, you know, for somebody like me, like, I wasn't overly familiar with anything going on outside of that except for, you know, I would stumble upon WCW Saturday night. Um, yeah. But even then, everything to me, being a WWF guy, it always felt like, like, I remember when the Steiner brothers showed up. Like, I yeah. knew them. I had their Galoob figures. I knew them from WCW. But when they showed up in, in WWF, it was like, oh, man, okay. They finally made it, you know? And, like, because that's yeah. – WWF did an amazing job of, of just kind of uh, training you to believe that way. Yeah, that there were there wasn't a world outside WWE, yeah. you know. <laughs> yep, they're back but, yeah, to that, too, I, now. I love this shirt. Uh, Great shirt. Yeah, I'll give them a shout out. The uh, website is violentmiracle.com where I got this shirt. So nice. if you're a Doc and Gordy fan. Uh, yeah, I heard uh, uh, Gordy's daughter, is it? Miranda. Si yeah. yeah, signed with, uh, was it with WWE? Or did well, a tryout? Try or did a yeah, tryout maybe? I know she, she had a tryout. I don't know if she got signed, but. And his son the, was uh, Jesse, right? From Jesse and Festus. Yes. Yeah. Which is funny. I thought, I heard, you know, uh, Jesse was, uh, you know, in WWE. This is time where I really wasn't watching, so mm -hmm. I tuned in to watch. And I thought Gordy's son was Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows. Yeah. I mean, well, that would have, I think most people probably would have thought that if you're just like, oh, yeah, Gordy's son is in this tag team. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. He was good, though, Jesse. I he was there was so yeah. much. There was so much possibility there. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but uh, no, yeah, I don't know. I, there, there's there's like a period where I really wasn't watching, and uh, but I heard that you know, yeah, you know, I'm a big Gordy Mark. So I was like, ah, oh, let me see what his son's about. I tuned in, and I swear to God, I th thought Luke Gallows was his son. Yeah, that you know, Gallows man. You talk about a guy who. I mean, I understand it was the appearance with the kind of horseshoe hair style, and he wasn't the in great, He wasn't in great. Yeah, he wasn't in great shape. But, uh, man, you look at him as Festus, like, years from now, people are just going to be like, you'll look at him in 2021, and then you'll look at Festus from, like, 2007, and people will just be like, oh, man, look how much he's aged, looking in the wrong direction, you know? Like, right. Festus, you look at Festus, and it's just like, he looks like 20 years older than Doc Gallows now, but. Um, yeah. That was a great gimmick, <laughs> When the bell it rang, was. and he was just freaking yeah. out. He was, like, really subdued, you know? and, you know. I'm always um, a big fan of people just freaking out. Just like, you know, because, yeah. you know, I've been there. Uh, <laughs> we all have our boiling point, even yeah. though his was just a, a bell ringing. That, that Pavlovian response. Yeah. 
Um, yes. So they rang uh, the bell, and, and you would go, and you <laughs> go to catering. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Welcome to SmackDown. Oh, I guess, guess I gotta go eat now. Yep. Uh, I'm <laughs> go to unbooked catering, which yep. you can get at prowrestlingtees dot com slash blue meanie. Uh, the unbooked catering shirt. Yes. Uh, but yeah, hey. man, Gallows. He looks amazing. He does. Um, now. he's he's uh he's working pretty uh pretty hard with this whole impact AEW crossover deal and of course he was a part of the uh the proverbial fart in church that happened at the end of uh AEW so I think I think I think it sounded a little bit like this hold on I got this queued up <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah that's a new one that's a new uh, one. So when did that take place? Uh, one, well, me and you were talking. You're like, dude, this, because I, I, I was like, my best works in the morning when I first yeah. wake up to go to the, you're like, dude, just fucking turn on your roadcaster, hit record, and let one go. I was like, yeah. all right. So, you know, one morning I'm walking down the hallway, and I was like, oh, there's my roadcaster. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Wow. <laughs> there's a lot. Lots to unpack there, uh, as I say. Uh, but well, there's a log sharing. jam. That's why you know there was a little, a little fucking. Uh, <laughs> there's like a, it was like skipping, uh, skipping a pebble in the lake. You know. Just, oh man. Um. So full full disclosure, <laughs> Meanie played that for me off air. So if my re- reaction seems subdued, um, it's because I had already <laughs> reacted to it. Uh, I had already. Well, I, I, Go ahead. I, I'd already popped like this. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 I got I got another one that uh, I didn't put in the roadcaster. I'm, uh, let me see. Tell me what. Well, this one you can genuinely react to the first time. Uh, take notice. Uh, I haven't had a chance to edit this, so you hear my footsteps. <laughs> you hear me like. Hit record, then you hear my feet pitter patter as I turn around. You hear the the sound, and then you hear my feet pitter patter as I turn around to hit stop record. So, here we go. What are we doing? <laughs> I'm forty seven. <laughs> I'm 47, oh, farting man. into a $100 microphone into a <laughs> $600 board. I'm 47 oh. years old. Is it, hey, age is just a number. Um, Welcome to Fight TV. Yep. Hey, thank <laughs> you everyone who's joining us now on Fight. Um, eh. This is the high quality content. Well, I, you know, you know, unless you're uh, MVP like our uh, Patreon folks who get to hear this Live and in living color as we record it. Yeah, you know, um, we uh, that's gonna be our next thing that we're gonna offer Patreon, where you just live stream first thing in the morning, <laughs> so they can watch it actually escape you. Um, I will. I will run cable to my bathroom, <laughs> which is which is. I'm yeah, you need about, a fans I, only account for that. Uh, uh, why? Why? Why do I have all this? Why do I have all this fan base from Germany? I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking my coffee there. It was almost disastrous. Um, hey, well speaking timed. of fan base, I want to give a shout out to uh, Derek, um, yeah. one of our Patreon members. I don't have it here. I think I left it upstairs, or yeah, I think I left Jerk. it upstairs. Uh, got my first uh, fan mail, which was really cool. He had posted a uh, a tie. Were there Polaroids? A giant? No, it was, a, it was a, a like a giant tie that I suppose the Easter Bunny would wear, and <laughs> it's uh, got a bunch of Easter eggs on it. And he like uh, posted something like for Chernoff's consideration, and I responded with some meme of like I want that, and uh, and he sent it, and he's like, hey. What's your address? When can I send it to? So I gave him an address to send to, and uh, it arrived. I think probably a little bit ago, but I just went and got it, and uh, um, it's enormous. <laughs> it's this enormous tie that, like, um, so w- when it's our Easter episode, 
Um, yes. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to put on my suit and I'm going to wear that tie for the entire episode. Um, That's amazing. As a thank you. Uh, also, Derek, I have one of these. Uh, you can see how long ago these were printed uh, based on my uh, lack of beard and 20 pounds and, uh, and the fact that it represents a website that doesn't exist anymore because we uh, shifted all my So Says Sure Enough stuff over to uh, Mind of the Meanies Patreon. But you're going to get assigned one of these sent your way. Nice. Um, you know what the secret to signing those gimmicks are? You got to rub it on your jeans before you sign it. Because it's because that's so it's worth more. Or? No, no, no. Seriously, I learned this because having signed cards like that, you know, mm-hmm. there used to there was a like a WrestleMania 15 card that came out. It was of the Job Squad. Yeah, and every time you, we would sign it, the uh, the Sharpie would kind of like beat up because mm. it was so glossy. Yeah, yeah. So what you do, and I learned this from people who buy sell baseball cards and get baseball cards signed you rub it on your jean get a little bit of that gloss off hmm. you know for like 10 seconds and then you sign it and the marker sticks better to the oh wow to the uh well i wish i would have known that before i signed 50 uh um did you already rub those other ones on your jeans yeah okay good because those signed pretty well um yeah 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 i don't know but those, those aren't are, as those, those aren't I, as glossy i will say to my left glossy. Uh, what's up those aren't those weren't as glossy as yeah. some of the other stuff I've Well, seen. I've got a, I signed it all with this silver metallic Sharpie. Although I do want to get a paint pen because we actually have uh we, we some people purchased uh for our action figures to be they there was a request sent in uh they're paying a little extra money for us to uh do a dedication and uh and we this was a specific thing these are people that are involved with something that we worked with. And uh, they asked if we could sign them in like a blue paint pen. Cause yeah. apparently paint pens are like a really, like that's where people really want, like for the action figures, they want them yeah. signed in paint pen. So I'll have to buy some paint pens. Um, hopefully that'll yeah. work. Um, I think maybe I'll ask uh, uh, Cardona and Myers, what paint pen do you recommend? Um, cause somehow they, I feel like they would know action figures and had them signed. So, I mean, that's their wheelhouse really. Yeah. When you think about it, to ask yeah. them. um, but, uh, Hey, um, yes. Busted open. Yeah. That was fun. Meanie was on busted open this past week. Um, and then we're going to circle back around after busted open. I, we have to talk about AEW's explosion and the fall. <laughs> that. Um, but Meanie was on Busted Open uh, yes. with Dave LaGreca and Tommy Dreamer. And, Tommy uh, Dreamer! Tommy. Yeah, go ahead. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was awesome. It was so good to listen to that. I was actually, I, I, uh, I listened on my phone in this like little, uh, so I had to take my car in for, an, for its yearly inspection. Yeah. And my appointment was at 1030 and you were on at 11. So I was just going to sit there for like an hour and a half waiting. So I listened to you on Busted Open. But because we're in a little pandemic thing, I was like, hey, uh, do you guys still have the like the computer room? Because that's where normally I would go and I sit with my laptop and I do some work. Mm-hmm. But it's the pandemic. I'm not sitting in this tiny little enclosed room with a bunch of people. They're like, oh, you know what? No one's been in there yet. Uh so the lights are off, but it's been all, you know, sanitized and everything ready, but no one's been in today. So I was like, perfect. So I went in and I did not turn the lights on. And I, so people continued to think that it was off limits. And I sat uh, un, uninterrupted and listened to the Blue Meanie on Busted Open. Uh, and it was great, Meanie. Thank you so much for uh, putting me over to that audience. Really do appreciate yeah. that. Um, but talking about the pod, talking about Retromania, um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about your experience on busted open. Not that it was your first time, uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, but it was really cool. You were brought on, I think specifically really to promote mind of the meanie, which it was the first time that you were brought on to promote the pot. So that was really cool. Yeah. I, I've been on bus open a couple of times. Uh, first time being at the first star cast. Uh, yeah. When you saw them from here, you've told that story before. <laughs> Yeah, heard them I, from your balcony or whatever. I, I heard them from my hotel room. 
And uh, I said to Tracy, I'm going downstairs and make them put me on the air. And uh, my whole strategy was just to walk downstairs and make eye contact with Bubba, who was on the stage. And I knew if he saw me, he'd go, come here, come here. So, you know, <laughs> that, worked the, that worked the plan. And then, um, no, I, I was on for, uh, they did a um, barely legal retrospective. Mm-hmm. I was on there with Dave and, and Tommy, and they also had Beulah on. Uh, and that was like right at the beginning of the pandemic and right as we were starting mine and the meeting. Yeah. Uh, and I, it was so long ago. I was still on my, my, my shitty headset at the time. Um, which I hate for those early episodes we've done. Yeah. But now you're saying but... inbox. <laughs> and then, uh, they brought me on for, uh, the pay tribute to Tracy Smothers. And then, uh, af- at that, you know, after that, on that episode, uh, you know, Dave's, you know, said to me, Hey, we got to get you back on to properly, uh, you know, promote mind and a meanie, which to me was like, man, that's awesome. I mean, you don't really have to put, I mean, uh, the, the airtime for anything is valuable, mm-hmm. you know, you know, whether you're wrestling on raw or SmackDown, uh, raw SmackDown, AEW TV time is precious. Same with radio. Yeah. And uh, the fact that he, he hung that out there. And is, that's something uh, very cool. people in the in the, in the age of podcasts kind of take for granted because you and I, we can go 10 hours long if we wanted to. Uh, and we have, yeah. I feel like, at times. <laughs> yeah. um, but Those they're are on early radio. Shows. They're on an actual, they've got commercial breaks they have to hit. Yeah. They have, you know, specific, like, we'll hit a commercial break here on Fight. We hit the commercial break when I go, this feels like a good time. Um, uh, although yeah. we do have a sponsor coming up in the next couple of weeks where uh, that's a little bit more. We, we actually have, you know, like real contracts and, and uh, are obligated to hit at specific times in the show. Uh, you know, so like grownups. Uh, but. Um, what the hell? Yeah, seriously. It's like, like, yeah, and you'll roll this at exactly what point in time? And I'm like, I don't know, when, whenever we get out of bed, you know? <laughs> after, bl- after Blue Meanie's fart. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's, we absolutely should, uh, hey, anybody who wants to sponsor Blue Meanie's farts, um, is that something we can do? This week's Meanie fart is brought to you by, and then we do that, and Meanie just farts over your ad. Um, I don't think there's enough cash to cover that. Uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna work on that. I want to see. We got to put out a tweet about that. Um, uh, <laughs> they say they they supposedly there's underwear with a like a charcoal filter that's supposed to filter out your fart. And I was like, dude, do not get me those because I don't want to get sued for giving people black lung when all that charcoal <laughs> flies out into the fucking air. Just uh, oh my! People looking like everybody in my vicinity looking like coal miners after I fucking blast one through those fucking shorts, you know. Yikes! Um, yeah. So fucking uh, Loretta, uh, Loretta Lynn comes out and sings a song, you know, after you know, coal miner's daughter. Um, <laughs> so let's uh, let's talk a little bit while we're talking about explosions. Let's just uh, well, talk. hold on. I'm still oh. talking about busted open. Okay. I don't know. We, we, I don't know. we transitioned off to whatever. No, it, it was very kind of yes. uh, Dave to reach out and say, hey, you, you want to come on and promote Mind and Amini? No, it was awesome. And uh, it was very cool. If uh, It's still there in the archives. Go to SiriusXM.com or wherever. I'm sure mm-hmm. you can Google it. And uh, I am there in the archives. It was very cool to be on with Tommy. Uh, very cool to be on with Dave. Uh, they gave me the floor to promote the show. And uh, like I said, that time is valuable. And, uh, you know, I, I, I shout out to Dave LaGreca and, and Dreamer for uh, allowing me to uh, be on there. I mean, we obviously, you know, everybody loves Tommy Dreamer. Dave LaGreca, yeah. you will never find a more passionate wrestling fan yeah. than Dave LaGreca. Uh, he he yeah. is... Um, it's infectious. Like, I feel like if you're somebody who's like it, almost in the way that I, I, I felt like Conrad's show with Bruce uh, Pritchard brought me back into like really remembering why I loved wrestling. Uh, I feel like Dave LaGreca can do that 
as well. Like can just, you know, and the other guys, too, I mean, you know, Bubba and Mark Henry and, you know, and Tommy, like not taking anything away from them, but Dave LaGreca is just so passionate about, uh, and, and he's not, he's not negative in the way that yeah. like, you know, a lot of people will comment on things and, you know, he tries and see, tries to see it in a positive light. Uh, I had the the pleasure of meeting him one time, actually, um, at a show that I was doing commentary on. He was uh, at a table signing stuff and spoke to him for a bit, uh, met his wife, and I want to say I met his daughter as well. Um, mm -hmm. And in the one time that I met him, by the end of the conversation, I, I felt like this had been, you know, at least the 15th time that we bumped into each other. Just a, a real good guy that I hope when the world opens back up, I have an opportunity to spend a little bit more time with. Um, but uh, but it was really cool, man, to hear you on that show. Um, well, and Dave LaGreca, just like Conrad, give they give their co-hosts an opportunity to have a career outside of the ring. Yeah. You know? A lot of times, there's no exit plan in professional wrestling. No. Uh, people, you go in real young, all full of piss and vinegar, all fired up, ready to uh, take over the world. But then, uh, and I heard this, you know, I heard Bret Hart use this analogy, and it's so perfect. It's like, when you get out of wrestling, it's kind of like leaving Shawshank. Yeah. You know, you, you really don't know how to react out in the world outside of professional wrestling. And that's why you see a lot of wrestlers getting, you know, s sort of get in trouble. Yeah. You know, in, in civilian life, so to speak. So, but, uh, you know, Dave and Conrad have created these platforms to give talent an opportunity to have a career beyond the ring. And that's so important. I mean, these that's are so people important. who are. You know, they're born storytellers. Yeah. And when they retire and they're no longer in the ring telling those stories, yeah. Um, this is now, it's such a great platform. Um, and then, you know, you can, there's so much you can learn. If you're a wrestler coming up, um, you know, you don't want to have too many, uh, too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. You know, your wrestler coming up, you could ask five retired you know legends and they're all going to give you different advice sometimes um yeah but y you know to listen to like a mark henry or a bubba ray or tommy dreamer talking about um you know the current product yeah doesn't hurt to sometimes open your ears up just a little bit whether you're the one they're talking about or you're somebody who's looking to to make it to NXT or WWE proper or AEW or wherever, you mm -hmm. know, listen to it. Tommy Dreamer tells you, yeah, I didn't like that because that didn't make sense. Take a note, you know, take a note and say, maybe I shouldn't do that. Um, Learn just, from those who've been, who've been there and who've been successful. Yeah. And then find those people and find out who they liked when yep. they were fans. And then you go up this tree of successful wrestlers and you might get turned onto a wrestler you may not have thought of before and learn something new from somebody different. Yeah. You know, you know, you're, the other you're thing, never, is, you're never done learning. No. And, um, the, you know, and if you think you are, you're wrong. Um, yeah. but the, the, the other thing is like, you can, um, w when, when you're studying what somebody did who is successful, nobody's successful without screwing up. And of course. you learn more from your mistakes than you do from just, you know, if every time you go out and you do a match, you come back and they go, hey, good match. You're not going to learn anything. And that was one of the things we always talked about with Al. Like, when that was when I really started learning from Al Snow because I never really trained in the ring with him. Um, right. I, I trained with Nick Dinsmore and a time with Joey Matthews and with Rip Rogers. But, um, and of course the Wild Samoan Training Center before that, years before that. But with Al, it was sitting next to him watching OVW uh, house shows and sitting there and him just explaining the good and the bad of what was happening live right there in front of us in the ring. Um, yep. And I remember a time when, uh, I want to say, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if he was injured or if he was waiting for his license maybe in Kentucky, but uh, Drew McIntyre was basically was Drew on one side, me on the other side. 
uh, at these OVW house shows. And Al is just, I mean, clearly Al was trying to teach Drew I think, some stuff and I'm just like eavesdropping. Um, but then yeah. eventually, you know, Al would just, just say these things to me. And the best part was he would ask, he'd be like, why did they do that? Or why should they not have done that? Or what should they have done instead? And you just learn all this stuff. The other stuff I would learn is when I would come back, once I started wrestling for OVW, I would come back through the curtain. And if it was, sometimes it was immediate, sometimes it was later in the evening. But Al would just, he would usually, again, he'd go, why did you do this? Or why did you do that? And you were never getting like the real like attaboy. And I loved that I wasn't getting that. Because, yeah. you know, he wasn't, he wasn't shitting on what I was doing. But he was just, he would pick out the couple things he noticed and just be like, hey, why'd you do that? Because it made you really think about it. And half the time you'd go, I don't know, because I just thought of it as a spot and did it, you know? And you realize, well, maybe that's not the right answer for why you did it. So, yeah. again, these people that you're listening to, they were successful because they learned from all of these other people. They made their mistakes. All of, you know, all of the biggest stars in the world made their mistakes you'll still continue to make yours but if you can learn something from tuning into a fun show like busted open and walk away being being more prepared for your in-ring career like man that's you know that's my my psa on it i don't know i just yeah. get passionate talking about how passionate these people are yeah and dude i learned so many things from al not only in the ring but in the car rides you know, yeah. I was very fortunate to spend several hours in a car, in a van. You know, he, I was a, a family man. I spent many hours in his minivan while he was taking bookings, and I was just a, it's like a class trip, yeah. you know. And uh, The worst part was things. when he would take his kids to school the next day in the same minivan, and they would just, I mean, honestly, vomit <laughs> from the, you know, the smell that was left in the car. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His daughter would just get, I mean, she's, oh man, it's so terrible because she used to get made fun of in elementary school as the smelly girl because she, it was just stained on her from being in that minivan. Um, yeah. So good job. Smell like the blue meanie. Who's the blue meanie? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's know. yelling at them. You'd be lucky to smell like the blue meanie. <laughs> Disrespectful sons of, um, Hey, if I can interrupt for one second, um, I don't know why I'm, Asking permission, I interrupt you the entire show, but uh, and I apologize for that. But you know, story of my uh, life. But Andy Slichter just sent me a message. Uh, a couple of things here that I wanted to share right here live on the air. Uh, this was somebody asked, uh, "Hey, has no one made a yo cuz you got the creams and sugar shirt for Meany yet?" <laughs> uh, well, Slichter has now done it, uh, so that'll be up soon. Oh and uh, I mean, it's kind of tough to see on the on the thing here, but. Um, uh, so I guess just go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie and it'll be up there soon. This might be my new favorite shirt um, because it's based off of one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, he said, because we're never on, uh, uh, since we constantly miss events from the past. Uh, yeah. Mind of the Meanie, never timely, it says down there in the Back to the Future uh, font. Andy That's Slichter. Amazing. You're knocking him out the of the park. merch. Um, damn. <laughs> I had him uh, do a specialty shirt just for me. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Ray Dittinger. Big fan. Yeah. Uh, for those n folks not in Philadelphia, uh, Ray Dittinger, uh, longtime journalist here in Philly, and he's in the NFL Hall of Fame for as a sports writer. Mm. But he, you know his beat here in Philly is the Eagles. But he could talk all sports. And uh, everybody calls him Diddy. So I had a uh, Slichter do me up a uh, Ray Dentinger shirt in the vein of uh, Johnny Cash. You know, when I said this says Cash. Yeah. But it, say uh, Diddy. it says Diddy. And uh, <laughs> another radio personality here in Philadelphia, Glenn McNeil, took a photo of uh, Ray Dentinger at the casino with his winnings. And he's just holding up like $13 or whatever. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's a photo of Did yeah you know, Ray Dinger holding up the money. It just says Diddy with a like a green tint over it. That is awesome you know, for the Eagles. So I'll be sending that to you to uh, help me uh, get procured. I uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll put that on. Um, 
I'm just writing down now because Slichter just wrote, uh, you need uh, that poo-pourri sponsor for the farts. The um, yeah. I'm, yeah. Uh, no joke. I'm going to look that up. And if I can't find them, then I'm going to find a smaller company that's doing the same thing. Uh, oh, my God. Poo-pourri toilet tanks. <laughs> but um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, Devin Ooh. Miller writes, Josh, do you have any good ne- What? What you say? <laughs> said, what was I going to say? I went, I don't know. Uh, Josh, do you have any good Nick Dinsmore stories? Uh, always really liked that guy. Um, yeah, I, I mean, my time with him was just awesome. We had a, a, a lot of fun in the ring. Um, one thing, so Nick used to carry a, to training, he would carry a kendo stick with him <laughs> and it was like a, if you, f- he would always just be like, yeah, this is if you, if you get out of line or you fuck up or you can't, or, you know, or if you drop or you do something, you know, that you're not supposed to. I got my kendo stick and he would just sit there. Never, ever used it or even made any attempt. It was such bullshit. But it was like this little thing that he would do, I think, just to like as like a rib on everybody where you're always out of the corner of your eye just going like, like, oh man, I totally just messed that that up. Uh shit, this didn't smart coming over with the kendo stick. And he didn't give it, he didn't care. But uh um, He did for his own he did for his own amusement. Yeah. But uh but he you know, some of my favorite times with him was at the end of class, he would always kind of do like a Q and a with us and, uh, nothing was off limits. I mean, he talked about his personal ask Nick to anything. What's that? Ask, yeah. ask Nick to anything. Yeah. Then he, a theme would play and he would, you know, yep. fart, you know, uh, he would do his Eugene, uh, I don't <laughs> know, but, uh, you know, but we would ask things, you know, cause he had some, uh, some drug issues at times. Um, you know, that, that, hurt him in his career and um and he was just so honest and forthcoming about all of that and really just opened up our eyes to a lot of aspects of the business that we didn't really we couldn't have known about uh because yeah. we hadn't been there and um he was great though uh i i remember i feel like i mentioned this at one point on a show that we've done meanie but uh, i remember when he went he came back like all proudly from an indie booking and he came back like the next class and he was just proudly telling us that he worked like something i don't know it was like a 15 minute match or whatever and he didn't bump once um oh, that's and amazing. he basically like walked us through how to do it that was the first time honestly even though i'd been wrestling for years at that point it was the first person who ever said when you get in the ring especially at like an indie show you walk around the ring you tug on the ropes a little bit. You kind of do your yep. thing because you're fine. He said, you're walking around, you're fine. And hey, is there going to be a board that's going to pop? Because if there is, yeah. you're not bumping on that side of the ring. Like, and it was, you know, so little things like that. But Nick was just. Um, that's something yeah. I learned from Al as well when I first broke in. And then uh, when I was in ECW, uh, I mean, I, I I went through those things when in, on the indies before ECW. But when I, when I got to ECW, it's, it was always such a cool thing when, like, I'd get in a ring and uh, John Finnegan would come over to, you know, give me the pat down like a referee does. And he, he would tell me where, like, there's, like, a like a, a loose board in the ring, mm. a loose board to my right, be careful, you know, as he's patting me down. So, you know, that's a, that's important. You know, mm-hmm. that's what another, another way referees are invaluable to, you know, the business as well, you know. But, like, like Nick said, yeah, yeah. And a lot of times, you know, you go to a show now, you get there early because everybody's going to have their fan fest. And <laughs> and there's never, never really that valuable uh, getting a ring and roll around before the show moment, right. you know. So, so, And back in the day, there was, really wasn't that much time either. But you wouldn't get into that ring until your match. Yeah. And you'd have to walk around and feel out the ring a little bit and see I, you know, where everything was. And, like, I know, like, we were kind of spoiled in OVW. Um, first of all, we had a WWE ring, um, but oh well, until they left, and then they literally like we show up the next day, and it's not the same ring sitting in the Davis Arena. But um, yeah. but we were spoiled with a having that nice WWE ring, but B, we built the ring every show, so we knew like there was no you know there was no concern. Um, 
that something was off or whatever. We knew how it looked, but that was Nick's point was like, you go to some other, to an indie show, you don't know where that ring came from. You don't know the condition it's in. Um, but Devin says Nick would be a great guest someday. Uh, absolutely. He would. Um, I think yeah. he has a school somewhere now or like a little promotion he's running. Um, yeah. I haven't talked to him in years, but, um, uh, did you ever work with Nick? I never worked with, with, with Nick, but I've been on shows with Nick, mm. uh, you know, after his WWE run and then, and you know, we were doing show, I was doing shows in Jer the Jersey area and he was on those shows and always cordial. You know, I feel like great. Eugene and Blue Meanie could have some fun comedy spots together, yeah. you know, like I could, I could see something like that, but yeah, I, I could be lying, but I'll, I, I know I did a tag match with Rikishi once. I don't know if Eugene, I don't know if it was a six man, but, uh, we were definitely on shows together. And like you said, Blue Meanie and Eugene would be a perfect duo. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. Nick's, <clears throat> you know, character, I mean, before he was Eugene, he was kind of like a Dean Malenko type He was Mr. Character. Wrestling. Yeah, Mr. Wrestling. Or yeah. something like Mr. I don't know if it was actually Mr. Wrestling, but it was like, he was basically, his whole gimmick was he was like a Malenko type, like a wrestling machine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was legit, you know? But... It, that's crazy how the business takes you, you know. Before yeah. I was the Blue Meanie, Half Shirt, and Daisy Dukes, I wasn't Mr. Wrestling, but I had boots and tights and yep. would try to, you know, wrestle, wrestle. But then, you know, the Blue Meanie is uh, what I became. That's that's the card I was dealt, and here I am, 2021. Uh, I want <laughs> to see you, know. before you, before you call it quits in the ring, I would love mm -hmm. to just see almost like a hybrid, because you had like the – like the singlet, um, like the Taz singlet over the long tights, right? Yeah. I would love to see a blue, like a, a blue meanie version, like where it's the singlet that has the BWO logo on it and like something down the sides of like the tight, like almost like one more, uh, one more run in the old uh, uh, Brian Rollins or Zebra Kid <laughs> get, like gear, style gear, but have it be like Blue Meanie, you know. Uh, and then you can get another action figure out of it. Uh, you know? You so, know, I, I've, I've tried to do different things and then, you know, like when, when I, after, uh, you know, I became the, you know, Skinny Meanie, and I was trying to do things down in Memphis. Or no, like when I released me in WWE, and JR said, ah, go away, put on a fresh new coat of paint, and come back, and maybe we'll do something. Yeah, I literally took that as change your paint. Yeah. And I changed my paint <laughs> a little bit. and yep. I've tried different things, but always people want the greatest hits, you know? Yeah. It's like uh, it's like when you go see your favorite band in concert, and they go, what, what's the song that makes everybody go take a piss break? Okay, this song's from our new album. Yeah. And, uh, but there's also, right, I gotta go take a in piss, some ways, you know? it kind of lets people know that, you know, there's still something left in the tank, right? Oh, yeah. That, like, where they come out and they we, go, We oh, know man. that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of gas left in this yeah. tank. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I I, uh, I don't know. I'm just such like a um, excuse me, a little uh, little seltzer kiss, and I haven't even opened my seltzer yet. But um, and precursor. I love that word. Now it's a video form, so it's like whatever, who cares? Um, but uh, I, I'm such a mark for wrestling gear, for like true wrestling gear. That's why Mrs. Meanie's um, plan for our our WrestleMania post show, I'm so excited for. She's gonna do a top five gear from each night and yeah. uh to me like my friends used to always make fun of me because i would i would just be like oh man he's got some new gear and they'd just be like that's what you're looking at you're watching wrestling and you're like but to me that's all part of the presentation and and um she was researching it last night yeah she, she yeah. was doing some research last night for that oh wow that's cool yeah um yeah but uh yeah i i um i i think that would be cool yeah. For you to get some, uh, you know, some wrestling gear made. I don't know. Big only mind. took me. Big uh, mind of the meanie 20, logo on the back. It only took me 26 years to uh, get new gear. <laughs> the last time I bought actual wrestling gear was 94, 95. Oh, man. You know, now we're in oh. 2020. Maybe if we ever do that tag match 
We'll get the, uh, we'll do like a heart foundation style, the singlet and the long pants. I have photos of me from our school where uh, it was me and Sick Rick Matrix, which whole other story with that guy. Uh, (laughs) We kind of did like a heart foundation type tag team Mm -hmm. where he had the long black hair, the wet look. Mm -hmm. We both wore singlets. He wore, uh, ironically, he wore blue. And I wore. Uh, the, I feel like the you've zebra. shown me that picture before. I think I've yeah. seen that picture. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of had the beard as an ode to Jim yeah. Amel Neidhart, and we would tag a lot when Al shows and do pretty good. And then uh, we went our own ways. And I moved back to Atlantic City. He moved back to Rochester, and uh, I saw him maybe ten years later or something like that. So. Yeah. But yeah, we had that heart foundation aesthetic. Switch. And I have so much. I have so many ideas going through my head right now, of of this <laughs> this proverbial tag match where like I I literally like hurt myself standing up today, but I still have in my mind. <laughs> give me a year, and I'll I'll be able to have one match with you. I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna be like, nah, I think I want to wear my stuff, and then I'm just gonna send a package of new gear to your. Uh... <laughs> How'd you get my measurements? Uh. Yeah. Remember that time I gave you that really long, awkward hug, Meanie? <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah. So um, speaking of awkward, let's talk just for a second, um, just so that we can get some sound bites that they'll put on uh, on WrestleZone. Uh, Meanie, AEW, you know, we did alternative commentary. It was a great show, I thought. Uh, it yeah. was a really good match that unfortunately nobody remembers what happened in that match because of the finish. Um, yeah. The pirate like didn't I go said, off. What's that? Like I said many a times, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, fans remember the finish. Yeah. You know, you could do you know, really cool things in between, but if the finish isn't there. You know, the, the fans remember the finish. They remember the beginning of a show. They remember the end of a show. And some of the stuff in between, but that finish has got to be strong. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it 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 wasn't. Um, no. But you know what? Actually, we'll pause that because I'm remembering. I'm pretty sure an Ask Meanie question came through about that. So stay tuned for uh, for the rest of that conversation because it was a good Ask Meanie that had like multiple layers to it. So I want to hold off on it. Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll little get into tease. That. Yeah, because I don't want to say it, and then the the guy who asked the question. It's just like, oh, I guess I'm not hearing my name on the show this week, you know. So we'll save hey, it. We don't we want people. To, we we want to ask me any questions. So yes, uh, yeah, let's all let's save not that. Th- oh, but uh, breaking news! I just got notification right now. If you are a uh, ad free shows member, uh, they just posted the poll for the topic for episode four of that was extreme. I nice. literally just came through. Um, and it reads here, what topic do you want to see Meanie Gertner and Chernoff cover for next month's episode of That Was Extreme? For ECW Legends, but there can only be one winner. Vote below. Now, the, uh, the, the, the options are The Sandman, Stevie Richards, Terry Funk, and Raven. And the reason those are your options are it's April and... Uh, unlike with Mind of the Meanie, we do try to always focus to make sure that that was extreme, uh, is, is focused on things. So our first episode was about uh, Barely Legal. Well, here we are, April, this is going to be an anniversary of Barely Legal, but we already did that. So we had the idea of what if we take all four people that were in the main event, because um, there was that like two-tiered main event, um, the triple threat that then the winner immediately faced Raven. Um, so we have the four competitors that were a part of the main event of that show. And that's how we came up with it. And, uh, so we'll see. And, uh, Meanie, who should I vote for? <laughs> vote with your heart. Um, um hmm. I want to talk about Raven. And apparently, uh, so do a lot of other people because as soon as I vote, then I get to see, but uh, right now, Raven's in the lead. So uh, let's let's see. Uh, I mean, it's been all, it's been three minutes since this thing's been on there, and uh, you know, already I think thirty seven people have voted up oh, thirty eight, yeah. um, and now we're tied, just like that. We're tied, Raven and Terry Funk. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Oh, see what happens. 
So make sure, yeah, subscribe to ad-free shows to vote, uh, but you don't have to subscribe to ad-free shows to check out That Was Extreme um, with myself, Meanie, and Joel Gertner. And you never know, Gertner could have a microphone and headphones, uh, or he could not. We're working on it. But uh, but we, okay, love, Meltzer. we love Joel. Yeah. Okay, Meltzer with the, he could have a microphone. Or, or he could maybe, have. maybe not. Yeah. Maybe. Could. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Um, uh, yeah, dude, ad free shows, uh, very kind to have us on there for that was extreme. Uh, yeah. having a lot of fun with it. Um, I like the once a month concept. I'd rather give, uh, you know, one solid show than have to scramble for, you know, yeah. 50 some odd regular shows, you know, also uh, it gives me time to research. Qu- yeah. Quality over quantity yes. when it comes to that. So, uh, and I'll tell you what, man, it feels like every time we turn around we're recording another one so yeah. like it's fly it is flying by um but uh but also every time you add more people you me and gertner schedules become more difficult and i just feel like joel is you know uh, poking fun about his microphone but joel is such an important piece of the puzzle of that show um yeah that i would i wouldn't want it to be in a situation where it's like well, okay well this month joel wasn't able to be a part of it so you know yeah. Uh, for scheduling reasons, so, but uh, no, nah, we're loving doing it over there, and uh, definitely check it out. It's free over at adfreeshows dot com. Uh, just type in that was extreme, and it'll pop up. Um, we're uh, we're having a lot of fun over there. Uh, that seems like a really good time, though, to take a quick break. Uh, throw to our commercial. Um, let's uh, let's learn a little bit about some of our uh, our merchandise. Get your Mind of the Meanie shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie. We have the Mind of the Meanie logo tee, the Mind of the Meanie badge, Meanie Tunes, Meanie Burger, Three Seltzers Deep, Meanie Gas, Wreck Every Bathroom and Leave, Meanie Screwing Up the YMCA, Alternative Commentary, Podcast Faces, and so much more. Go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie. All right, and we're back. Um, if you're watching us live on Patreon, um, a second went by. Um, but I hope you guys uh, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie and check out all the great merchandise that we have over there. Word. Uh, so what else is going on, Meanie? What else is happening? Uh, dude, to just a, I've had a... Uh, a week of mixed emotions. <laughs> yeah. Where, uh, you know, uh, the first beautiful day of the week. Well, first of all, like uh, me and Mrs. Meany, uh, you know, we're on Twitter a lot. And uh, the other day, speaking of ad free shows, Conrad was uh, admonishing uh, the great Dave Silva for having moved to Huntsville, Adel- Alabama and not gone to the local Waffle House. Yeah. So that inspired Mrs. Meany go, me, Mrs. Meany to say to me, it was like, we should go, there's like a Waffle House, like an hour from our house. <laughs> so, well, well, you know, the first nice day, let's, uh, let's go for a road trip and, uh, you know, go to, go to the Waffle House. It, Cause there, like you go down 95, you go through Delaware, which like I've said is the, the February of States. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> right as you, that first exit into Maryland uh, is uh, a Waffle House, Elkton, Maryland. So I'm like, yeah, let's do that. But also, in the meantime, I need a new chair, right? Because uh, when I do this, the Mind of the Meanie show, I thought it would be a novel idea to do the show sitting. I have four chairs from the Philadelphia Spectrum. I was like, I'll be so Philly. <laughs> I'll do a show in the Philadelphia Spectrum chair, which isn't the most comfortable chair on the planet. I mean, these things were built just to sit in for a few, like an hour or two, and then leave or sit till the concert starts, and then you're standing up the whole time. So uh, I, I, I don't like, think when they what? were built, there was any thought to comfort at all. No. I don't think anyone gave a shit about if people would be comfortable. No. Um, so we're like, you know... Mrs. Meany found this uh, store along the way that sells, you know, uh, office furniture. 
So I was like, let's make a day of it. We'll, you know, we'll drive an hour south, mm-hmm. have some Waffle House on the way back. We'll hit the furniture store, buy a new chair for the podcast. Maybe, you know, get one for Mrs. Meany to, you know, splurge a yeah. little bit, you know, uh, and uh, let's do that. So, yeah, we drove down. Beautiful day. Beautiful uh, Tuesday at noon we drove down or whatever. Mm-hmm. Went down and we just went like hog wild in in uh, in Waffle House because you know since the pandemic you really can't eat in or yeah. do anything. It's usually outdoor dining and <laughs> stuff like that. But this uh, Waffle House it was pretty good with the um, keeping people separate. You know, every other booth in between the booths was plexiglass stuff like that. Very everybody cool. was wearing everybody was wearing their you know the masks and gloves and stuff like that so we went down and you know we had uh dude i just went ape shit you know i had you know i saw the pictures the, yeah i had uh I, I, my ba- favorite thing is the eggs over easy with the hash browns and you just break up the yolk and you mix in the hash brown with that got the steak got some sausage this is mean you got some grits and then uh <laughs> so we we we're like full on the uh, waffle house so we're driving back up through Delaware to go to the store and man, that fucking, you know, waffle house just hit me. I'm just fucking cranking out like farts. Like every, it's like almost like that trip from, you know, Cherry Hill to Lima where I mm. destroyed Jason Campbell's car, which you can see on Meanie tunes on youtube.com slash mind of the Meanie. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but we're, we're driving through Delaware and all of a sudden my car just went, nah, you know, you, there's that moment when you're driving and you can feel your 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 car just give out, like and going down it kind of felt a little weird. Uh, I did. I was like, man, I don't know if it's you know what's going on here, but the car feels a little weird. On the way back, you just feel the gas pedal just go, Phew. you know, just like, eh, I'm not having. It. So I was like, oh shit, and of course, like an idiot, you know, as if it would make any difference. I turn the radio down because somehow that's going to make the car yeah. turn back on and make f- everything back. I got to turn the radio down and listen. <laughs> like, like that's going to make the car go, Oh, you turn the radio down. Let me go back to working. So, <laughs> so I, I, you know, look to my left, right. And I pull off and, um, and, uh, you know, I was patient about it. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was younger, I, you know, I was like, I'll wait a couple minutes, try to restart it. Try to restart. It, it wanted to kick over, but it just wouldn't kick over. I was like, fuck. So, uh, thank you were God getting that kind of like the, and then it wouldn't go. It, it's like, you know, it's like, fuck it. Won't. So, uh, thank God for AAA. I called AAA and, um, well, first you called Triple H and he's like, sorry, man. Yeah. We have, we have nothing dude, for you. Yeah. And, uh, dude, wrong app. He was like, dude, wrong app. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he went, Meanie, wrong app. Uh, and then you called Double A. And like, <laughs> Meanie, and he said toot toot. Uh, <laughs> not to toot uh, my. That's my favorite Arn Anderson line. Not to toot my own horn, but toot toot. Yeah. And then he would toot his own horn. Yeah, he's so good. <sighs> anyway, but yeah. So, oh, so you pulled amazing. over. And pulled you're, over, and you, and you tried a little bit, and it just wasn't happening for you. Yeah, and to which uh, Mrs. Meany, who, I mean, she's been with me all these years. You know, we've been saying 10 years for, like, seven years, but now it's <laughs> actually 15 years. Mm. We'll probably say 20 years for the next four years, uh, <laughs> but it's been 16 years. Uh, she's like, you are taking this amazingly well. Because normally I freak the fuck out. Yeah. You know, but I was just like, you know what? I got AAA+. Plus. You know, uh, I haven't had to use it. So I, I, I they come out. <laughs> and it was at that point where I was like, oh, no, this guy's got to stick his head in his car. And, uh, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Oh, my God. I was, you know, it's like, prr, prr. I wish I had a mic on that fucker. Oh, right. man. But uh, <laughs> and thank God he had his mask on. Um, <laughs> but he was like, oh, man. It, 
he, he, he's like, try, you know, try to kick it over. I tried to kick it over. He's like, it's either a dirty fuel filter or your fuel pump. Fuck. Right. You know, just when I, you know, I, you know, had some, a beautiful day to do something. My car went, nah. Gets in the ca- guy gets in the car. He goes, oh, well, it smells like you're out of gas. <laughs> um. <laughs> So uh, we had to get a towed from Delaware to Philly, which thank God for AAA Plus, I'm covered up to 200 miles. So, uh, and I got a fix and I got it back yesterday. So uh, we're going to have to rebook that trip to get the furniture. But, uh, yeah. you know, like it was, a, it's up and down week. Yeah, my car shit the bed. I had to get, it, I had to spend a good amount of money to get it fixed. But, you know, then the next day I'm on, busted open. Yeah. So, yeah, it balances, good out. And ba- balances out. You know, uh, RJ Krasinski bad. says, uh, what's better, Waffle House or Cracker Barrel? Well, Waffle House, if you're talking about waffles, but uh, Cracker Barrel, if you're talking about diarrhea. So, um, <laughs> the Cracker Barrel is like, uh, it's like the fucking the Disneyland of fucking southern cooking because you, you get that thing and they get you on the way out you gotta buy all the knickknacks and yeah the, uh, no cracker barrel is good cracker no, they're bar- good that's a funny that i uh, have i ever told i think i've told the tommy dreamer story from uh from all in or all out rather um please so please refresh my memory okay we're on flight let's tell the story again yes um so i'm i'm Backstage at, I, it, I think I'm almost positive it was all out. It was the one with the uh, where Jericho won the title and did the little bit of the bubbly and all that stuff. It was that show. So we're in yes. Chicago. And every time that they're in Chicago, the uh, AEW always, Cracker Barrel always uh, caters uh, right. AEW. And, uh, and it's good. It, it's actually, you know, I made the joke about diarrhea, but that's just, you know, a, that, that's a, a personal stomach issue, I guess. Um, <laughs> No, but I, I have nothing to gauge it with because I always, I always have. Yeah, so it's just. Uh, well, I mean, listen, what, what do you expect to happen when you just smother things with butter? That's you know, it's not Cracker Barrel's fault. Um, in order for me to get diarrhea, I would need to stop having diarrhea in the first place, and then yeah. <laughs> re- reacquire um, the diarrhea. So, uh, but they had all the you know food in there, and everybody just tore it apart. And then there were rolls. Yeah. They have these delicious rolls. Yes, they do. And uh, and so you know, I had been there in the, the <laughs> where they had they had the TV, the monitor was set up in there, um, and in the uh, catering area, they also have that monitor, you know, that's set up right by the um, entrance way where people can just you know watch. But they have one in there, so you know, I like to try and stay a little bit out of the way of like, I don't want to just sit by the monitor right by the entrance way to watch the show. Um, with all the talent, I like to, if I can go in a, a different area to kind of just, you know, be out of the way. Uh, right. but I'm in there and it actually is like a who's who because they had cracker barrels. So everybody's in, in the catering area. So Jericho comes in and he's looking for his before his match, but he's looking uh, for a role and he comes, he's like looking for food. He's like, any food left? And people are like, oh, I don't know. And he's looking and he's like, uh, like there might be some rolls. And he comes and he's like, no. He's like, he's like, uh, let me guess. Tommy Dreamer came in, finished these up. About two minutes earlier, Tommy Dreamer came in and goes, oh, still got some rolls. And grabs a couple of rolls and finishes the rolls and walks away with a handful of rolls. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, do I, like, I don't, you know, I'll speak when spoken to. I'm not about to, like, I kind of wanted to just be like, yeah, yeah, Chris, he actually just did, but that I didn't say anything, but it was. You don't want to be a stooge. I'm sure. Yeah. And I'm trying so hard not to, I just want to like crack up. Uh, And Calvin's sitting with me too. Calvin and I are just like looking at each other because we literally, like literally two minutes before Jericho walked in. Dreamer comes in just in his, you know, I mean, you know, his is just like, oh, we still have a couple of rolls and just <laughs> and just grabs whatever was left and left with yeah. them. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. And uh, so that was that was a fun um, time. There was a weird time like where I was doing AEW stuff and doing a bunch of random indie shows and uh, where I was doing commentary and stuff like that. And. It, I was seeing Tommy Dreamer like every weekend it felt like 
at a different place. And it was like, I almost felt like I was stalking him because like every time I'd be like, hey, Tommy, he'd be like, hey, good to see you again. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Yeah, hey, good to see you again. And it's like, and Tommy Dreamer also has that, you know, he has that that demeanor and voice where you're where you're like questioning whether or not like did I piss him off? Like does he really not want to talk to me right now? And then it's but no, but that's just um uh he just Well that's really the thing you know, on one side you get on one side you get Dreamer who's just like, Hey Manny, how you doing? And then you get the other end you get Sam who's like, Yo <laughs> You know, this is like <laughs> part of me, I speak Sandman. Um you know. Dude, I, I did a show in Wisconsin. Uh, for a promotion called Freedom Pro Wrestling. Um, Do you mind if I crack this yeah. while you're telling the story? I'm oh, please. Let's both crack it. Right. Yeah. So I got a blackberry cherry vanilla. And I'm sorry, got, black cherry vanilla. I got tangerine, which you can't really see in my ring light here. Okay. Very nice. Let's go three, two, one. Three, two, one. Mm. Go birds. Where they're going, I don't know. But uh, I know where the Sixers are going. <laughs> uh, I, I going to a nice place where they then let everybody down, but uh, yeah, yeah, where people will be crying and yeah. But I did show in Wisconsin with uh, Tommy Dreamer and uh, for uh, Freedom Pro Wrestling, um, and uh, you know they they were kind enough to have you know hook us up with like a breakfast buffet and just for the boys and stuff like that, and then like there was like a eat and greet with the fans, yeah. They come out, eat with you, have a little Q and A. Uh, and if you ever been to a breakfast buffet and they have the sausage links, usually they line the the bottom of the tray with bread and put the sausage links on there to absorb the grease, kind of ah. take the grease out. So during the, the uh, Q and A, uh, oh, shout out to uh, Freedom Pro Wrestling, Riley Reinhardt and Chris Crude. Uh, two great guys, so and they were kind enough to fly out, fly out Mrs. Meany because it's around her birthday too. So we had a big birthday bash for her in Wisconsin. But uh, I feel guilty if I don't put them over, so I had to say their names. Sure. Um, so you know, t- during the eat and greet, Tommy goes, "I'll give somebody five dollars if they eat the bread." You know, the the sausage bread with the grease in it, and like. He's he's like up in the ante, and then he finally said, "Fuck it." And he ate it himself. Of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> Which was on brand with you. Remember when he, that was his like gimmick in yeah, WWE a for a little bit? Yeah, where he would just like, eat things and drink things and Dr- drink the barber fluid, or you know, put a cup in a urinal and drink the water out. Of it. Ugh. Dude, I don't he, care he how to... clean they make that urinal, uh, yeah. how sterilized they say it is to do a spot like that. Nope. Not doing it uh, well, for all the for all the things they say about urinal cakes. You never hear about urinal pies. No, it's a great point, man. Yeah, um, that was horrible. Yeah, I, <laughs> that I couldn't get behind that. Um. No, no I, I couldn't even fucking. De- I couldn't even just oh, deadpan man. that one. Just like, uh, hey, Vanessa Bello <laughs> says, "What up, uh, Vanessa?" Waffle House is open twenty four seven. Very affordable. Plus. They have a jukebox that can be run via an app. So yeah. whenever there's a huge, this is fantastic. Whenever there's a huge thunderstorm in our area, I can control the jukebox from my house within a 10 mile radius. I always make sure riders of the storm suddenly comes on the jukebox. That is amazing. That's great. That reminds me of uh, when the Phillies were in the world series in 08. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the game deciding game was on, and yep. it got delayed because of the rainstorm. Yep. And we're in McCusker's, and some jerk off on the jukebox. Not that Vanessa, you're not a jerk off for doing the song, read the rain songs. But somebody at McCusker's went on a jukebox, and every song was, "Who will stop there?" You know, every <laughs> it's, it's raining, man. Every song was about rain, and we're like, uh, "Who's playing the rain song?" <laughs> so. Andy, some wise ass. You Andy know? Slichter says tomorrow is Pi Day. What's that? It is. Yeah, three fourteen is Pi. You know what? That's not going to get over on this show. I'm going to do that for talking with friends. The Pi thing. It'll it'll get over there. You can get a shirt made. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Pi Day tomorrow. 
Um, uh-huh. And I then guess, I guess three, I'll eat. We'll have three sixteen. Well, three sixteen day. Yeah. You know, you know what my uh, what my family is doing upstairs right now? They're making Irish potatoes. Oh, mm. I, that's so kind. My uh, yeah, man, I, get your car working. Come on up. Grab your action figure and Irish potato. Uh yeah, that, that that will be happening. Threaten yeah. you with a good time. Um, yeah, my uh, my wife has this tendency to take all this food that I always enjoyed and somehow make it better than the like I so I went so uh, a humantashin. Excuse which me. Which is which we've talked about on this show before. We've been doing this show long enough now that I think it came up last year. But a humantashin is basically a triangular. Um, <laughs> They sell those uh, at Ikea? Uh, yeah. um, it is, uh, it's a triangle shaped like Haman's hat from the old uh, Purim story. Um, Haman was the <laughs> okay, bad guy. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you know what? I, I know I was, I was goofing off, but now it's coming to me. Yes. So to they're, they're a pastry. Basically, you fill yeah, them in yeah, with yeah. like, my favorite one would be like cherry, uh, like the, what you would have on top of a cheesecake. Um, Cheese, my cherry humish tasha. <laughs> nailed it. Um, but <laughs> um, <laughs> we do a segment. Sorry. Can we do a segment where Meanie just says uh, Hebrew or, or Yiddish words? Uh, it's a very small audience that's going to enjoy it, but you know, um, yeah. well, the rumors that it's small, but it's honestly it's average or above. Um, yeah. So uh, it's neither here nor there. Um, so the or after swimming. Yeah. Before uh, or after swimming. Did you say after swimming? What? Um, uh, for, our, for our folks at Fight TV, I'm 12 inches if you measure from my asshole. So. <laughs> and since we're on on, on camera, <laughs> show us, Meanie. Um, no, so uh, um, the home montage, my point is, as a kid, I always loved them. And you'd get them like... You'd have like bakeries that'd be like, we have humantashins. I'd be like, oh, that's delicious. And then I would eat it and I'd be like, they didn't get it right. They didn't do it like the right way. There's a certain like taste. You know, if it's something from yeah. from your childhood, you can remember that taste. So my right. wife decides, you know, she's going to take a stab at it. She's going to look up some recipes and she's going to figure it out. And I'll be damned if she did not make the best tasting humantashin I've ever had in my entire life. Like up, like. That's awesome. Like miles ahead like it's it's basically she made the crust of the humantash and it's almost like a sugar cookie it's so damn good and it's That's soft awesome. and it's oh it's amazing and then this year she goes you know what i want to try and do this thing too and i'm like oh what's that and i look it's a humantash and cheesecake where instead oh. the filling instead of being how you can put various fruits or whatever and i would always put that cherry pie filling in yeah it's filled with a freaking cheesecake and then the cherry pie on top. It was, dude, it was amazing. Uh, so That's now not, she make, uh, that, what's that? That's love. That's love. Yes. And uh, so next year I'm going to have to, I'll have to get you some because this pandemic will be done and, you know, we can just get together and I'll just give you some home and But uh, uh, they, it was so good. But now she's doing these Irish potatoes. And once again, it's like, I'm like, I love Irish potatoes. And she's like, oh, well, I have my recipe that I make it. And I will be a son of a whore if it's not the best, uh, the best I've ever had. You know, that's amazing. That's awesome, dude. And, and this is like the second time I, br- I brought this up on the uh, busted open this week because they asked me about my favorite Tommy dreamer story. And I, you mm-hmm. know, when we went to, the story of when we went to Raw and uh, we go into <laughs> go into catering after we you know settle down and Dreamer goes, Meanie, I can't keep my game face on. I'm like, why, Dreamer? He goes, they have cheesecake, and I, I fucking every, every sense of I just fucking died laughing. And for people who haven't heard the story before, this was the Raw. This was the ECW invasion of the Manhattan Center Raw. Yeah. So this isn't yes. like. You know them there years later working for the company, so that's the game no. face he's talking about. Is you're there for ECW, you know you got yeah. you, you're tough guys. You're there, but you're professional. You're doing all that. And Tommy Dreamer <laughs> discovers cheesecake. He walks over to me like very a matter of factly. He goes, "Meanie, yeah, Dreamy, Dreamer, yeah, uh, Dreamy, yeah, hey, Dreamy, <laughs> <laughs> Meanie well, and dreamy. dreamy, yeah, 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 yeah." Um, I can't, I can't keep my game face on. 
Why, Tommy? They have cheesecake. So I brought this story up on Busted Open, which also made me tell the story of when me and Mrs. Meany, we were in the courting process. She still lived in Connecticut, and I would call her like every minute of every day. Mm -hmm. She had like a questionnaire that she would, you know, ask potential boyfriends. And one of the questions was, would you join a cult if they offered you cheesecake? And my answer was, well, is there a graham cracker crust? Yes. And she went, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and, that was, that, and that was it. And she Yeah, it was supposed to be yes or no answer. <laughs> yeah. And here we yeah. are uh, 30 years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, so James Sorensen says... Best uh, decision of my life. Was that? She was the best decision of my life. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, second best would be me as a co-host. Um, no, but in all seriousness, she's the, uh, you know, yeah. Y- you know when uh, when you've made a good a good decision. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, we, we both, uh, as Jim Ross always says, uh, out, out through our coverage. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a good place yeah. to be. I, I have to thank her uh, four older brothers who, uh, you know, gave her her sense of humor. Yes. Because, like, I like uh, you know, in the early days, I was like, dude, she's like the best girlfriend ever. She's like having a little brother. We sit around, watch, <laughs> we watch football, we fart, we, we do everything. You know? <laughs> no, seriously, she's, she's the best. She's yep. the best. Well, I mean, I think uh, – the pod squad agrees. She is definitely a, uh, a valued member of the, of the crew over here. Um, and again, she will be having her very own segment, uh, on our meanie mania, uh, post-show extravaganza, which now is a great time to talk about that April 10th and 11th right here on fight, as well as our Facebook page and our YouTube page, uh, facebook.com and youtube.com slash mind of the meanie. We will be coming to you live after each night of WrestleMania, where we are going to give you a post-show recap of the night's event. Uh, and Mrs. Meanie is going to give you her top five, uh, attires of the, uh, of the competitors that night. Uh, very excited for that. Dude, uh, thank you to Fight TV for having us and allow us to give us this post-show coverage. Uh, like we uh, we called back when I was a kid, we will be simulcasting between yes. Fight, uh, our Facebook, and YouTube pages, trying to get the Mind of the Meanie uh, word out there. So uh, the, the, the more coverage, the better. And uh, thank you to Fight for allowing us to have, like I said... Airtime is valuable. The Fight TV is one of the top streaming networks in the world, and they're allowing us to come on after WrestleMania. What time? Who knows? Who knows? But, but, I mean, that is a big thing. We really do appreciate that because a place yeah. like Fight TV, who may or may not even carry WrestleMania, they did last year. I don't know what their, their deal is. I'm not that involved in Fight TV. But, um, hey, the post-show spot, is a big one and they're yeah. giving that to us. You know, they're not going to have yeah. several different post shows going on, you know? Um, You're stuck with us. Yeah. They're stuck with us. And that's a, uh, that's really cool. So we're going to bring our a game um, for at least yeah. night one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Night two is going to be a solid D plus, but um, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a, uh, it's going to be a blast. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, very much looking forward to it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, Mrs. Meany will be a part of that. James Sorensen says, uh, James Sorensen is our, he's a blue tier member, Sorensen level, if you will, uh, yeah, of, the man. of the pod squad. And that has earned him. James is going to be on our, uh, I, I don't know which show it's going to be, but I think it's, um, I think he's actually going to be on next week, next week's yeah. show, because yeah. next week will air on the 22nd. And the week after that is our one-year anniversary show. Um, and I know we're trying to get uh, some other guests on there. We want to make sure we give James a good amount of time. So James will be on next week's show. Uh, James is apologizing to us. Uh, he, he worked his job right. until 5 in the morning. Um, so we just woke up and got here a little bit late. Um, 
So James, never a problem. Uh, yeah, well, but don't do it next week. <laughs> this is the only yeah. Because uh, yeah. you're going to be on live next week. Um, so that's exciting to have James on. That's what you're you on the clock. Over, yeah, over at Patreon. Dot com slash mind of the meanie. If you do three months in that top tier, uh, I guess James called our bluff. We're like, yeah, three <laughs> months at our top tier, and you can come guest co host the show. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to. So, uh, James, a little is, ins- uh, what a little inside baseball, you know, we put up these top tiers, and you know, we're like, ah, nobody will go for it, you know, yeah. it's it, it looks fancy. Yeah, it looks nice. Blue, you know, it looks nice. But oh. he's like, "Hey, I, I," and we're like, "We're bad salespeople." We're like, "You sure about that?" Yeah. How much? How many times <laughs> did we like literally say to James, like, "Dude, like, ah, come on, like, that's a lot of money. I don't know. I don't know that you want to do this. That doesn't seem like a good, a good idea." Uh, the James has we're, been uh, incredible with his support, and we're really excited to have him on next week. Um, yeah. that's gonna be really look, cool. Look. look. Every member of our Patreon and Pod Squad are valuable members. Yep. Uh, we're we're just putting out. We're just talking about you know how amazed we are with you know James taking that top tier, but every tier yes is valuable. Uh, that helps us keep the lights on here at uh, Mind and Meanie. Helps us you know pay the bills. It really does. It's- because you know you go into a pod. People think oh you go into podcast. You just hit record, talk, put it up. No, there's hosting fees. There's this and that and the other thing, and there's a lot of a lot of fees that yeah. like I was not aware of <laughs> until Josh was like, "Well, yeah, there's this that." And I was like, "Fuck me!" Uh, yeah. <laughs> and this is right at the beginning of the apocalypse, where like all my bookings went away. I had like <laughs> two or three months worth of bookings. You know, I was like, "Oh, I could pay through this." You know, through my mm-hmm. bookings. You know, just put that money towards the. Nope. Yep. Yeah. World shut down, and then uh, we did the Patreon, and, you know, thankfully to, to the kindness of the folks in our Patreon supporting us, uh, we're able yeah. to, you know, you know, add to the show and the, up the quality of certain things and stuff like that, you know. So everybody in our pod squad is invaluable. Yes, uh, know? including but the, thank non, you, James. the non-Patreon members. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. It, it's... Uh, Again, we Should really we? appreciate anybody who tunes in. I mean, tuning in on Fight is awesome. Uh, tuning in just to listen to us, watching on our YouTube. Um, we, we, really, uh, we really do appreciate uh, every single one of you. I will say that uh, episode 50 was one of our uh, most downloaded episodes that we ever did. Um, it's insane. And so it, yeah. it looked like people just kind of... People got excited. Hey, it's episode fifty. We're gonna do so. We had uh, uh, Wildcat belts on. Like it was, it was really cool. So, um, it's shout nice. out to Andrew. Yeah, it's 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 nice to um, to be kind of heading in the positive direction that we're heading in. Um, speaking of things heading in a positive direction, Meanie, uh, Chella Toys has the two pack, the Mind of the Meanie two pack coming out sooner than later. Um, they sent us Amazing. more video or more pictures. Of uh, I showed my wife. She's like, "What's that?" I'm like, "It's a bunch of my torsos," um, and <laughs> they're all going through. It's so neat to see. I, I I almost wish I could see like a video of how they actually do it, but um, they're going through the paint process. So we had that uh, an image of like a bunch of little meanie heads. Well, now we have yeah. a bunch of little meanie heads with a blue blue hair and a blue beard, but they haven't done the makeup yet or the eyes. So it's like step by step. They're they're painting all of these figures, so they are getting closer and closer. And I think we're really hoping it's amazing. May, maybe for even an April release, and and uh, and I don't know how it works. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I probably should know, but I don't know if if the ones that we're selling are getting sent directly from the factory to us, or if they have to go to Chella Toys in the UK first and then to us. So I don't know. Will Will Chella have them first? Will JB Toys have them first? Um, and. Uh, it's a rat race to see who gets yeah. it first. From the hit podcast Mind of the Meanie comes the brand new Mind of the Meanie action figures by Chella Toys. A two pack featuring former WWE superstar and ECW original, The Blue Meanie, and his Mind of the Meanie co host Josh Chernoff with removable microphone. These figures feature three points of articulation and incredible likenesses. These retro style figures can be purchased outside the US at ChellaToys.net. 
and inside the U.S. over at mindofthemeanie.com. With only 1,000 made, this collectible two-pack won't be around for long, so pre-order now. The Mind of the Meanie action figures by Chella Toys. Order now. Can't wait. Yeah. Oh, dude. They look so good. They look so Absolutely. so freaking good. Um, Absolutely. I'm excited about it. Hey, uh, do you want to ask me anything? Love to. Let us do it now. It's time to ask me anything. Ask me something. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Let the air out of the balloon. First question, uh, I guess, comes from James Sorensen, um, who uh, uh, who writes, is next week the one-year anniversary show because it's episode 52? This is a conversation Meanie and I had. We were like, well, I don't know. So technically, no. Technically, episode 52 is the final episode of our first year. So episode 53 is the one that coincides with the week that we start, the date that we started the show. So we are treating episode 53 as our one year anniversary show kicking off the next year because it's a year since episode one. So that's kind of the, our, our thought process. Um, it's kind of like when you celebrate uh, your first year anniversary. You don't celebrate your first year anniversary on your wedding night. Right, kind of right. It's the uh, um, the, the year after. Yeah, so it, it, it's you know either way Something, we're just extending know, our good. yeah. No, I got yeah. what you're trying to say. Um, yeah. So yeah. By the way, for the figures, you can go at JB Toys and Championships. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's ask Meany some questions, shall we? Please. Yes. Ready. Uh, you're sort ready. Of. So am I. Um, hashtag Ask Meanie. We we'll start right here. Uh, Chris at Chris WD two thousand nine. What were some of the best and worst pieces of advice Josh and the Blue Meanie were given during their wrestling careers? Um, best would be just uh, if you think you're going too fast. If you think you're going too slow, so go even slower. <laughs> Uh, mouth shut, ears open. Um, I was gonna say that that's mine. Mouth shut, eyes and ears open. I don't know if it was the worst advice, but the ver- worst piece of advertising ever heard was a promoter said to me, "Yeah, tonight's show. We uh, we thought we advertised that the show was sold out to try to sell more tickets." Yeah. Was that like, was All nice. right. And that was the last time I worked for that promoter. <laughs> uh, yeah. I re- anything that w- wasn't worth keeping, I kind of forgot. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, it's just like, um, but I, I, I still tell that little piece of nugget of, uh, yeah, what well, promoter said he was going to advertise the show was sold out, sell more tickets. <laughs> was that um, all right? It's a, yeah, it's crazy. I think... Uh, I'm trying to think, I I don't, again, I don't remember the worst piece of advice because I just ignored it. Um, But I think anything that comes from a, uh, anything that comes from a long time indie worker who has never done anything other than worked in front of three people, maybe, maybe just ignore the advice or take it with a grain of salt. Um, It, you know, when people will like give, they'll, they'll, feed you all kinds of crap of like uh like yeah you know what you got to do out there is this you know like uh yeah you gotta you don't i know everyone else says do this but you gotta do like you know when you should know when to listen and when not to listen um but best advice i ever got was the you know um keep your uh keep your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut um and uh and you know advice my dad used to give me all the time with everything not just wrestling but everything he used to always say you got to learn to play the game and that was advice I felt like it took me I didn't listen to that when I was wrestling a lot of the times and I would get I'd get hot at things I'd be you know that person said this or that and I'd be I'd take it all personally and he'd always say you got to learn to play the game and 
you know, you got to know when to, uh, sometimes you got to know when, as they say to uh, eat shit and learn to like it. Um, yeah. and some, and you got to know when to stand up for yourself. There's all, but they're, they're, you know, you got to know, know when you're paying your dues and make sure you're paying them to the right person. Because there's right. some people in the business who are going to feel like you need, you know, that was something that I experienced. I remember when I was down in OVW, they had DCW, which was like their non-contracted, like basically the people training and stuff like that. And there were people that were working there. And uh, I remember, uh, are you familiar with Bin Hameen? Yes. So he was down there and I'm not saying now, but I say back then he didn't know shit. He didn't know what he was talking about, but he somehow convinced them because he had taken like an acting class that he should be booking the shows. Um, I remember he would always have everyone call him pops too, which was weird. And I remember one time he's talking afterwards and about how people were backstage talking. He's like, they were out there putting on a clinic, showing you how to work stomach heat. And you're sitting there, you guys are sitting there talking or whatever. Now, listen, I'm not trying to come off like your father or anything to which I then of course said, interesting coming from a guy who makes everyone call him pops. Didn't get over well. Um, but I remember looking at him, the guy had never, he, he was like coming up with stories and booking matches for this thing because he'd convinced them that he, he lied about, I don't know if he lied, he embellished all this, you know, I, I've, I took acting classes and I did all that stuff. Meanwhile, I had run shows for years, but I came in there wanting to not tell anyone that I wanted to be, I didn't want to come in with any sort of, sort of an ego. So the fact that I had run shows that I had booked shows that I'd actually booked venues and sold tickets and experienced what it was to try and get people to come back. I looked at this and I knew this guy didn't know what the hell he was talking about. He'd talk about psychology, but he didn't know shit. He didn't know anything because I was lucky enough, which got me heat with those people. I was lucky enough to be sitting next to Al at the OVW shows. And I'm sitting next to Al saying one thing and I'm coming down and I'm listening to him and some of his buddies say another thing. And I'm just like, so then I would listen to what Al said and then they would be like, didn't you hear what I said? And, you know, I didn't play the game in the fact that I should have just been like, all right, yeah, this is where I am. I'll do whatever they want me to do. But, uh, but you know, it, it, it's, it's, that's an example of getting bad advice. And I know, look, he's got his, he's got a podcast now. He's doing whatever. And I haven't spoken to the guy in over 10 years. Um, I don't wish him anything but success. I mean, I, I have no, don't get me wrong. Like, I don't have like personal animosity towards him, but professionally, I just didn't, um, I didn't agree with his methods. And so that was another example when I say, you know, who, you know, uh, uh, pay your dues to, to the people who deserve you to pay your dues to them. Because there were times where I would look at it and be like, you took an acting class and you've been in the wrestling business for, I think at that point, maybe a year. And at that point I had been in the wrestling business and been going to shows with Bill Apter and doing that stuff for nine years. And it was kind of like, listen, man, I don't want to come in with an ego, but if anyone should be paying dues or paying respect to somebody, it's not me to him, you know? And, and it was, but I did, I did allow him to kind of be like the one that I had to, you know, which was both the right thing and the wrong thing to do. It, it's tough. It's tough. But, um, yeah, sorry. Went on a little rant. That's <laughs> all right, man. Get it out. Get it out. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's got their own experience, uh, and that was yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that that's yeah. what you went through. You know, I just you know, and and look, it it's am I saying that everything he he said was wrong? No, absolutely not. Am I saying everything he booked was wrong? No, absolutely not. But he booked some uh, some head scratchers for sure. Um, uh, for instance, when I said I was leaving OVW, uh, that I was heading home. The WWE had left and I was there for a couple, you know, for another month or so afterwards. Al was gone. When the WWE left, Al was hired by them. So Al had left OVW for a certain amount of time. And I, I stayed because I just was like, okay, I'm here. I want to keep working. I'll see what I can do. And, and after about a month, I realized it's time to go home. Like there's no way I can work the indies at home. I don't need to be in Kentucky. There's no reason because now these people 
they're now running the main show and they don't know what they're doing. Um, and I remember saying to him like, Hey, I'm going to go home and, and him and some of the other people, they're like, no, dude, we, we were, we had this whole plan. We're going to put the, uh, um, the, whatever it was that they had the, the, um, TV title on you and we're going to do all these things. And some people, the idea of putting a, a, you know, getting the title is enough to be like, all right, I'll stay. And I thought about it for a minute, but I didn't trust them. Maybe I was wrong. I'm not saying they were lying to me, but I didn't trust them. And I thought, am I going to stay here just to like, what's the point? What is the OVW TV title when it's not the OVW that it used to be? And now Al Snow has turned it into this awesome, awesome place. And it's absolutely where you should go if you want to learn the right way. Um, But at that point in time, it was kind of a shell of what it was. And and I remember they're like, okay, well, if you're going to leave, would you mind... Uh, we want to get you over or we want you to put over this one guy and then we want you to put over this other guy. I said, perfect. That's fine. I'll go out and I'll do that. They wrote the entire show around me. Uh, it started off with this big championship match that was a uh, 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 lumberjack match and they had me go over and interrupt the commentary and start saying all these things, whatever, and then they go to commercial. The next segment, they come back, and they call me out for interrupting commentary, and they're going to put me in a match, and then they put me in this match, and I, I jobbed out in the match, more than happy to do so. The dude was twice my size, too. It would have been stupid not to, especially because I told them I was going home. Um, and then it was like after the match, they, they're like, this other guy's going to come out, and I'm going to have an interaction with him. My one issue with it, while I, I was more than happy to put these people over, more than happy to get that time on the commentary and do all that. I told you I'm leaving. Don't, I mean, if you want me out there as a lumberjack or you want me to job in a match, that's fine. Give someone else that spot on commentary. Give, what did you just, you put me over to the Kentucky audience so I can go back to Philly and work the indies? Like it didn't make, it, it, it so that they can go, oh, this is building to something. I'll tune in next week. Uh oh, Josh isn't here anymore. Like yeah. it didn't. So it's like stuff like that just didn't make any any sense to me. And again, I I, I apologize uh, for going off on that. But um, but those were some. You know, I had experiences. I'm a, a that, at best, that's your life. A, a glorified that's your, that's your, what? That's your life experience. I yeah, mean. I mean, I'm well aware. I am at the very best a glorified low end indie worker. That is what my wrestling experience was. Um, but I got to be, I, I, I like somehow fell ass backwards into the luck of knowing Bill Apter, of getting to sit beside Al Snow. And for I, I feel like I know so much more by getting to travel with Stu and Drew. And like I know so much more than what maybe my career says I should know. Um, so I do like to think I know a little um, yeah. Meanie has forgotten more than I'll ever know. So don't, you know, uh, again, I don't, I'm always reluctant to put myself over as some like great, you know, mind of the business. But, um, but anyway, thank you for letting me vent that. Uh, That's a whole you. nother show. Uh, mind of the business. <laughs> mind of the business. My, uh, my spinoff where everybody goes, why is he the one talking about it? Um, Mark and Dryden has a couple of questions here. Uh, coincidentally, I mentioned the, the dude who, who does some stuff with Russo. What are Josh and Meany's opinions on Vince Russo? The story I've always heard is, quote, overrated because if Vince wasn't there as a filter, end quote. What are your guys' favorite and least favorite Russo storylines and angles? So I have never met Vince Russo. Never worked for him, never met him. My experiences are what people have told me or uh, what I have heard about him as a fan. So I can't give I, I can't give an opinion of oh Russo ruined this, Russo ruined that because I don't I wasn't there. Uh, I don't know. Um, so I'm just gonna go completely to you, Meanie, on this because I, I, if I remember correctly, Vince Russo was a large part of why you worked for the WWE. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, I love Vince. So Russo. hate the guy, right? Yeah, got you. A, yeah, <laughs> got you. A, no, sure. Your dream job. Yeah. Ah, what a dick, right? Mm. Yeah. Only gave me the opportunity to support my family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love Vince Russo. Uh, good dude. 
Um, you know, when, you know, their WWE was adding television, uh, they needed more talent. They were expanding. They, they were doing raw. And now they were going to do this show called Sunday night. Heat. they needed more talent. And, um, he had pitched to have me come up sooner and that didn't work out. But, um, when they, they came back the second time, I was like, absolutely. And, uh, it was, the idea was to have me part of the job squad. And I was all part of Vince Russo being a fan of ECW and watching ECW and liking what I was doing. So yeah, uh, with, without Vince Russo, I, I probably wouldn't go, been able to go to the WWE, you know? Yeah. What's uh, your thought on, on his reputation of why people think Russo ruined everything? And do you think Russo, I mean, you were there. How much was it Vince McMahon or other people around Vince Russo being that filter? And how much was it that, you know, because there's always the chance. I've always thought to myself, people go, oh, Russo went to WCW and without McMahon as the filter, he was terrible. But there's also, there were a lot of different pieces to that puzzle in WCW. And isn't there a chance that he had really good ideas and then later on just didn't? Well, and the, the conspiracy is that Vince sent him to WCW. <laughs> hey, go to WCW, pal. <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, yeah, that was always the uh, popular opinion that Vince had some really good ideas, but and once you run them through the Vince filter, uh, you know, that's what it came out on TV. Uh, but, you know, I, like I always tell people, uh, it's always better to be the – talent that needs to be reined in mm-hmm. as opposed to being the talent that needs to motivation and Vince Russo really didn't need any motivation. He was a, he's a motivated guy and that's why he's still out there and right. uh, people are, he's still in the, the wrestling universe with his own, he's got his own podcast network and shows and stuff like that. But uh, I can't speak to his WCW stuff because I'm sure there's politics behind the scenes with that. I mean, hell, Beshoff even had problems. Yeah, you know, with the behind-the-scenes stuff. So, you, you don't know what was him and what was, you know, the TB the Turner people who you know didn't get the wrestling business. You know, yeah, I can't really put that on him. I didn't. I can't speak to the TNA stuff because I didn't watch TNA. So, uh, I mean, as far as him being overrated, um. I don't think he was overrated. I don't think you can say he was overrated because no, no. I mean, I think it's a conversation of some things he did really hit and something, and and he had a lot of misses. Well, that was a high pressure. A lot of misses. That's you know, he was in a high pressure situation too. We got produce weekly live TV. Yeah, you know, it's not like a like a TV show where you have sixteen weeks to produce a show. Yeah, and then you have an all season to reset. It's every week. A couple hours a day, yeah. live TV, and that's that that's have- the thing. That's the thing, meaning like you have everybody is a, a armchair quarterback, right? Everybody, yeah. it, it, you can all look at every show on there and go, "Why do they do this? Why do they do that? They should have done that. They should have done that." Dude, uh, everybody, I can't name- uh, everybody is an expert with twenty twenty hindsight. Yes, I can't name every person under contract in the WWE. I, I can't. I don't know some of the talent um, because there's so much programming. Yeah. And if if my entire job is to just watch it and I don't and I lose track, there's a chance that when you're in that bubble, that's a lot yeah. to juggle, man. That's a lot to keep in your mind and yeah. to, to put together. And, and I'm not trying to make excuses for them because I think there's a lot of stuff that they fall flat on. And I mean... You know, yeah. it's not their fault that they don't have Meltzer's uh, work ethic. But I think, you know, I think that, uh, I think Russo gets, in my opinion, in my fan opinion, I think he gets a bad rap. Some, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, unfair. And, 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 some of it's fair, some of it's not. Look, everybody's uh, open to criticism, you know, myself included. You know, uh, yep. you know when... Things are good. They're good. When they're bad, you got to say they're bad. But, yeah. you know, to say he's overrated, I wouldn't say he's overrated. No. Mark and Dryden has another question for us. Uh, what are Josh and Meany's favorite and least favorite gimmick matches, and which ones would they recommend that people go out of their way to see? Favorite gimmick match. And least favorite. I know my least favorite. 
Dude, I hate, I know this was born in Issa. I hate fucking three-way dances. Just like our, you know, the, more than, like, if it's not a tag team, you know, where you got four yeah. people, okay. But when it's like three singles competitors they're, in they're one match. They're fuck. They're, just yeah. from, because I've been in them and I fucking hate them. Because, you know, it's just, it's just sucks. It sucks. Um, favorite gimmick match? Probably the Royal Rumble. Because <laughs> just, just the anticipation Damn. factor that comes along with it. They took the most mundane thing, which is a battle royal, and made it, you know, exciting. You know, the ba- usual battle royals is just like fist and whatever, going mm-hmm. punch, kick, punch, kick. But with the Royal Rumble... Hats off to Pat Patterson. May he rest in peace. Absolutely, he made it. He he made it exciting. So my favorite gimmick match, Royal Rumble, least favorite three way dance. It's fucking hate it. So, I I took the question a little bit differently and took it more sure. as gimmick matches in the sense of like a ladder match or like uh, or like the last man standing. Um, as opposed to, I guess I didn't. Uh, I mean, obviously, what you're talking about are gimmick matches, but I guess I like wasn't thinking that way uh those are great answers obviously what i exploding with, ring matches <laughs> what's that exploding exploding ring matches so i will tell you in all, all seriousness my least favorite is the uh anything titled death match um and i'm not talking about the exploding ring. like we'll we'll put that aside just for whatever the dude stuff I've, see, I've blown up more i've blown up bathrooms better than they blew up the ring. <laughs> <laughs> um yes. i don't doubt it um, but you know, I, I've had the opportunity to call some matches, um, like, a, a Matt Tremont and like people like that, you know, I, I've seen where they're shoving, uh, skewers in their forehead and kind of like yeah. stuff like that. And these extreme death matches and they're smashing light bulbs and doing all the CZW stuff. GCW does a ton of that stuff. Yeah. I want to preface by saying I'm not disrespecting the talent that's in there, right. like a Nick Gage or someone like that. Like I'm not disrespecting their, their talent or the sacrifices that they put their bodies through. Right. But I was brought up in the business to believe that the goal of being a professional wrestler is to make something look real without it actually being real. To yeah. make it look like it hurt really, really, really bad without it hurting at all or hurting as little as possible. Right. So to me, smashing someone through a pane of glass, um, and look, and I understand like going through a table or something like that's, see, to me, that's different. That, that's a different thing than going through glass or stabbing someone in the head with, with something. Like that's not... Um, and I know I'm hypocritical because I do kind of enjoy the the thumbtacks in a match, or I like you know <laughs> something like I think there's places, but it's these death matches, the death matches where they're just it's really like the 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 stuff you can't like the stuff you can't control, um, like what you talked about the other week, what happened with um, uh, David Arquette, where he mm-hmm. got a, you know his neck cut and everything like that. Like yeah. to me, that's not wrestling. If you want it to be something else, that's fine. That's not professional wrestling to me. It, it's, it's just not. Because you know what you don't have to go to wrestling school and train for? You know what you don't have to study tape for? How to smash someone over the head with a light bulb. Or how to get a light bulb smashed over you. And this is strictly my opinion on it, meaning you don't have to agree or disagree or whatever. Yeah. But going through a table... There, there are safe ways you can do things. You can't, and I guess someone could say, well, there are safe ways with a light bulb. Like, don't smash it across somebody's eyes. Like, yeah, okay. But like, I don't know. I just, so to me, the deathmatch stuff, it's not wrestling. It, it, it's, it's just, it is what it is. And if you enjoy it, more power to you. If you want to be involved in it, more power to you. And I wish you safety and health and success. Um, but I personally don't like it. I, I like the art of what pro wrestling is. Um, and I don't see the art in that. Um, favorite match. 
favorite gimmick match, I would say, if I'm not taking the Royal Rumble as an answer, um, I I think I would say a uh, ladder match. I think when done right, a ladder match yeah. can be can have all the suspense. It can have all the high spots. It can, you know, um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've been venting a lot on this episode. That's fine. It's fine, man. Uh, dude. This, hey, they uh, did this ask me the a... question as well, so sh- it's not totally out of line. Nah, dude. It, it shows a two-way street. We, you know, we're co-hosts. Yeah. So I'm, you're, allowed, I'm you're like, allowed to have an opinion. We're co-hosts. It's the mind of the meanie. Like, I feel like I come in there and I've like, uh, uh, I'm like uh, infiltrating your mind. <laughs> Because um, yeah. well, there's a lot of things I I agree with. Uh, death matches. I'm not a fan. Like when when I first saw one, I was like a mesmerized. Oh God, by, yeah, and that's why I said but, like but, I know but, I'm but, being but, partially hypocritical. But but now I'm just numb to it. It's like you can you could be amazed by watching a car crash, like and horrified by a car crash, but. If every day you're watching a car crash, you just kind of go, eh. Yeah. You know, uh, and some of that stuff, I mean, especially with the light tubes, not the fact that, the fact that they're, you know, the stuff that's in light tubes and then you got yeah. open wounds and you're breathing that shit in. It can't, it's not good. No. Uh, and that's me. That's not me saying, being old timey wrestler. That's just me being a human being, giving yeah. a shit about the people harming themselves that way when they don't need to. And there's a lot of talented people who do death matches. Like you brought up Matt Tremont. He's mm-hmm. an a he's an amazing performer. Uh also a hell of a guy. Car- Great guy. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not disrespecting and I'm certainly not yeah. trying to, you know, make fun of what he does. I mean, the dude's ah, a badass yeah. through and through. Um, he is entertaining. Very charismatic, yeah. It's just not it's not to me, it's not it's not pro wrestling. What you're doing in there is it's you're having a pro wrestling match. And doing something else as well. Like, that's not, yeah. you know, and I just, I don't know. It, it, it's, maybe I just don't like it. And that's okay. And it's also right. okay if you do like it. And it's, right. you know, so. Yeah. Um, Ringside Rant Jones, uh, which is our good buddy RJ Krasinski, uh, writes, one, uh, he has two questions here. One. Okay. Damn. Okay. One, is there a place for death matches in the current pro wrestling climate? He sent this two hours ago, by the way. Um, Yes. Is there a place for death? Let's do that first. Is there a place for death matches in the current pro wrestling climate? Obviously, there is with GCW and stuff, but uh, let's focus that more towards, is there a place for it in WWE or AEW on the larger scale? For me, something that... Uh, extreme, no pun intended, should be a means to an end. Yeah. You know, just the way a cage match used to be the good blow off for a feud. Now, if some got two guys hate each other that much, that it's got to come down to that. That should be like the blow off. That shouldn't right. be. I mean, because where do you go from there? That That's the age old wrestling question. Where do you go from there? There's an audience for it. Uh, but it's got a shelf life. It's going to put. It's going to give your career a shelf life because your body can only absorb so much of that shit. Yeah. And um, like I said, there's plenty of town people who who do death matches. Yeah. You know, but uh, is there? I mean, there's it's a, there's an audience for it. Mm-hmm. But uh, am I going to go out of my way to watch it? Probably not. I think this is a perfect time for us to talk about. Um because apparently there wasn't like a strict question about it. Um, yeah. But the the exploding ring, barbed wire death match thing. Um, yeah. The match itself, I thought was well done. I, I'll be honest, it looked too, I thought the exploding parts looked fake. I'm talking throughout the match. Yeah. Uh, not only the fact that one went off before they even touched it, but um, I... They looked like the little uh, gimmicks that you throw down on the on the snaps. Yeah, the little snaps. That's what these are like, you know. Yeah. And uh, I didn't, uh, I just didn't like it. I, 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 I. But here's my 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 counter to that. I love them doing something safely that looks, you know, right. looks. And that's my other thing. That's pro wrestling. 
you know, you told the story of when you were working on the on the wrestler, the movie, and yeah. everybody's touching the bar, the fake barbed wire, going, "Well, I wish we had these." Like, yeah. there's an aspect of it where you go, "Okay, it's a work." These explosions should not char somebody's arm, or you know, like they they shouldn't really in, injure you. It should just be pyrotechnics. It should be a stunt. Um, yeah. But the finish, man. <sighs> Well, my will, thing with the yeah. my thing with the match was like, I didn't like the fact that you know there's barbed wire on three sides of the ring, only three sides of the ring, uh, so they could get in and out of the ring, I guess. And the whole thing of the barbed wire is to keep you in the ring. Yeah, you know, just you know that's that's the purpose. That's what was why the barbed wire match was born to keep guys yeah. in the ring. You know, and if you could just freely roll in and out. It, it degrades the meaning of the match, kind of, you know. But the guys worked their asses off, uh, yeah. and they, they put their bodies through a lot, and I appreciate that. But the execution was like a... Yeah. It, uh, like Vanessa's saying, I think AEW covered it well, saying the explosions were Kenny Omega uh, playing pranks all along. I To me... The explosion not going off didn't even need an explanation other than the fact that, you know, the explosion, you know, it could have easily just been said with uh, Kenny Omega. Not, I don't like the fact that it's like Kenny Omega playing pranks. What it should have been is Kenny Omega pissed off at somebody because he wired that damn thing and that thing was supposed to take out John Moxley. This was supposed to be the end. This was supposed to be, you know, um, and he's he should be pissed. He's a heel. He should be furious about it. Not that he was playing a little prank. Uh, like pff, it went off and he's like, ha ha ha, you guys got scared. Like, no, it's stupid. Um, I thought the promo with Moxley and Eddie Kingston was perfect. That to me, when Eddie Kingston's sitting there, he's compa- he's saying he basically had a panic attack. He went black. Like he, he, everything went black and he's saying, uh, it, he, he was, it was reminding him back when they're saying, we're going to send you to Rikers. We're going to send you, I'm sitting in prison and they're going to like, and I look at him, few people could sell something like Eddie Kingston. A man yeah. is amazing on the microphone. Um, Absolutely. But I looked at that, and I'm almost looking at it, even though I know the truth, I'm looking at it going like, I'm not going to argue with him. Shit, man. Like, I, yeah. I, I believe him. Even though I know it's not true what he's saying, I completely believe him, and I'm satisfied with it. Um, yeah. I don't like the idea of, of, like, Kenny Omega being like, I meant to do that. I meant to, like, whatever. It's like, no. The reality is Kenny Omega... Should be should be sitting there going, you know, John Moxley. You should thank God that the that the people who set this up screwed up and everything because what I had planned for you would have been or, the end of your career, and or, there will be a time, Moxley, where you know, blah blah blah. Or just do the thing where you know they 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 go back and they're showing the footage of how they're planning to leave Moxley in the ring to explode, and then. Do the thing from the movie Airplane. Do you ever see the movie Airplane where the mm-hmm. the runway lights go out and you see the guy there with the plug on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, get, they could have somebody who sabotaged the explosion or something like that. Like, yeah. Like, you know, uh, you know. There dude, was imagine a- if Imagine if they could have got Renee Young. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, like footage of her just like cutting something like a and here's cutting the, a wire and here's the fun part to save her they husband could have. they could have they to save they're her. in the yeah. same building all the time she was yeah. there they yeah. could easily bring her in there and they could she, film footage that they found from their security camera or whatever of renee young disconnecting the thing or pleading with the person you know and saying i'm yeah. pregnant with his child i'm uh, you know all this like they could have and 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 again Two weeks later, that's easy for us to sit here and, you know, and say what, yeah. you know, what should have happened. Um, but I could have thought of that the next Monday. You absolutely uh, could have. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, hashtag yeah. hire meanie. But, uh, but in all seriousness, sort of it now. Yeah. but I think sometimes they were, you know, and that's, I talk about the bubble all the time. When you're in the bubble, it's tough. Yeah. But also they've got everybody coming down. I w- what I would not have done, um, if I were uh, uh, Tony Khan, I would not have come on there and just, you know, and been like, oh, Kenny Omega's playing, whatever. I would have just been like, we don't know what happened. 
and we're going to get to the bottom of it. And we don't know, uh, as far as with Eddie Kingston, um, he seems to be okay now. Obviously, he wasn't injured by the uh, explosion, as that did not go off as as planned. Um, but while a lot of people were focused on that, us backstage, honestly, were focused on the very scary moment of what was going on with Eddie Kingston in the ring. Because we knew he wasn't injured but why was he not getting up? And we were sending our medical personnel and we, and we apologized that we weren't able to make it clear on commentary. We were all kind of in the dark and all kind of concerned for Eddie Kingston's safety and well-being. There are ways to sell things. Yeah. And I, I just, you know, uh, um, I think there was an opportunity that that night could have been spun to... We don't know what's going on with Eddie Kingston. We're very concerned for him. Yeah, that pyro thing didn't go off, but we're not really concerned about that right now. And then you you change the narrative and you make people walk away thinking your main story is what the hell just happened to Eddie Kingston in the ring. Yeah. Not, oh, Eddie Kingston sold something that didn't happen. Like right. there was a, a way to twist the narrative. Again, here I am a week or so later saying that. I don't know that that's what if, if, if I was backstage, if they would have gone, Josh, shit, come up with an idea. We need an idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would have come up with in the moment there, you know? Um, like we just said, everybody's an uh, expert with uh, 2020 hindsight, you know? Yeah. Uh, man, I got the sniffles today. I apologize. <laughs> you usually have it. I had a... a, a I'm, pr- I'm pretty bad with my allergies right now. but I was bleeding like to, a uh, stuffed... Like like a like a stuffed pig. Uh, I was bleeding like a stuck pig at a nosebleed. I was telling Meanie earlier, going to the grocery store. Knew I had to get back in time to do the the podcast. I'm driving in the car. All of a sudden, my nose starts bleeding because it's so the change of the weather, and now it's like cold again. And like, and I so I shoved a bunch of stuff up there and put my mask on and went in and bought what I needed to buy. <laughs> Came back out while I was uh while I was uh crimson mask inside there, but um um. James Sorensen wants to know what is Mrs. Meanie's Etsy. I don't believe it exists anymore, does it? Nah. You know, uh, with everything that's going on right now, uh, and everything that's going on with the Postal Service, yeah, uh, there was a lot of people who were selling stuff online, and it wasn't getting to the consumer in a timely fashion because everything that was going on with the Postal Service, and people were getting bad reviews, and stuff like that. She didn't want to be in the position to sell something, mail it out, and then somebody claimed they never got it, right. and then, like, you get a bad review and stuff like that. So she was like, you know what? I'm going to shut it down for now just because, you know, why ro- run the risk of sending out merchandise? It makes perfect people sense. Say they, people say they never got it. They get refunded, and then you're out the merchandise. Yep. So, you know, it just made sense to shut it down. Uh, two more questions here. The second one from uh, from Ringside Rant Jones over here. Um, <laughs> with WWE uh, slash NXT and AEW pillaging independent wrestling talent, do you think the indie uh, can recover? I don't know why they would be hurting to begin with. No, if I think I'm, 100%. If I'm an independent wrestler on the indie scene and guys are getting signed up, I'd be like, well, that's my spot to move up. Yeah, uh, you move when when a company takes a piece of talent, another talent elevates, and then that person gets to shine, and then they eventually will get a chance to get hopefully get signed. So, you know, it's just like so easy. WWE well, also, would sign so, WWE would sign somebody from ECW. I knew I was going to move up in in the pecking order. So. And also, you look at the actual indie promotions themselves. Well, now you have fans who are starting to look at this, going like, "All right, well, I'm hearing some good things about so and so. I want to yeah. go see. I want to go see them now, or see her now, and I want to take a picture with them after the show, get an autograph because if they're talking about them, I know I'm going to be seeing them on NXT or Raw or SmackDown or AEW soon enough. And you know, so there's that. That just only helps the business. And you know, I've always felt like uh, I've always said that Ring of Honor was like the Saturday Night Live of wrestling promotions and uh, ECW was before that. ECW was that. Um, But in the sense, using Ring of Honor as an example, there's a sense of like back in the day you had, uh, you know, much much like you you had your, uh, 
your Bill Marys and your uh, Eddie Murphys and Dan Aykroyds who left Saturday Night Live. And it's like, oh, man, we lost all the good ones. Well, next up you had Mike Myers and Dana Carvey and like all that, you know, yeah. and then they're gone. It's like, well, that's it. And then you've got Will Ferrell and like, you know, um, and it, it just keeps going. And now they've got, I mean, they've been doing an amazing job Saturday Night Live, you know, last few years. I think they're hilarious. But um, I always felt it was the same way. It's like with, you know, Ring of Honor, it's like, oh, we got AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. And okay, they're gone now. It's like, oh man, well, there goes the the blood, the heart of Ring of Honor. It's like, well, no, because now we've got, you know, I'm, I'm blanking, but, you know, we, we've got Cesaro and, and people like, oh, you've got, you know, your CM Punks and these different people who came along and, and uh, you know, and they continue to, be, and then all of a sudden you had the Young Bucks and you had people like, you know, like it, it continues to, evolve and more people get their opportunity to step up um and right. uh yeah uh james Sorensen says are you excited for next week i'm getting goosebumps with excitement <laughs> uh yeah i'm excited every week and i'm excited anytime we get to talk to the pod squad and anytime we get to talk to you james and uh i'm excited man yeah it'll be a good time man be a good time last question here comes from ivan rivers at the Fallen Ivan, if you two had to take Guy Fieri on a diners, drive-ins, and dives tour of Philly, what are the three stops? Oh, for me, uh, well, I'm a big fan of Oregon Diner, but mm -hmm. uh, well, that's part of the diners. Yeah. Uh, good diner is the Oregon Diner. Uh, a because of such an ECW uh, tradition. Uh, dives. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not the best one to ask. I went to one mildly okay diner for like my entire life. So yeah, yeah. There's a there's a place near me that I just got a. I I just started going to. I can't even think of the name of it, but it's a pretty. Good, I I've been meaning to go there, but uh, that Oregon diner. Uh, I would always recommend like Tony Luke's course tony luke's yeah and there used to be a really good place here called texas wieners but they just shut down too so with everything that's going on a lot of places are shutting down yeah. so uh texas get wieners back to went, went from uh, midnight to six <laughs> just uh yeah come, come back to me uh when everything opens back up because i gotta see what still exists yeah uh guy fieri good good, good, good question um, though Who's, yeah, that was a fun question. Who's uh, rocking a new championship belt made by Wildcat Belts? Absolutely. Um, I think yeah, I think we got the exclusive. Yeah, that was the think, exclusive. Yeah, we got exclusives on that. Well, thanks, everyone, uh, yeah. for all of your questions. Great questions, as always. Uh, yeah. I always say, uh, and even if we somehow don't get to it, still ask away, man. Uh, Seriously. Whenever, whenever the, you don't have to wait for the day of the show to uh, send in your question, send your question during the week. We'll yeah. Anytime. It. Cause I'll, I, I've, I have them there. I'll find them. Yeah. I, I like ask me any, anything because it always yeah. triggers a, a, a memory that I might've forgotten about, you know, cause I'm so used to like, you know, you, I'll do an interview with uh, like a podcast or publication and it's always the same question. So I, so I like the creative questions like uh, the ones we got today. I, I think they were uh I think they were great. I'm checking in. Um looks like some people have just ordered some more uh two packs from us uh over at you can go to mind of the meanie uh dot big cartel dot com or just go to mind of the meanie dot com and you will see right there where to click for our action figures um and for all of our merchandise and stuff. You can buy signed uh concept art. Um and uh and uh, congratulations to Vanessa, who says uh, she gets her first shot tomorrow. Um, she's, quote, essential. Awesome. Well, you're essential here, uh, and we are happy that you're getting your shot. Um, uh, shot, 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 yeah. shot, shot, shot. <laughs> and, uh, and we thank all of you for joining us here on Fight, uh, joining us at, over on YouTube.com slash Mind of Meaning, and, of course, uh, wherever you download your podcast uh meanie any final thoughts before we wrap it up as always thank you for everybody who uh 
joins us live every week on Patreon. Thank you to everybody who downloads every Monday at 6 a.m. And thank you to our new viewers at Fight, who uh, view us every Monday night at 6 p.m. Uh, thank you for everybody who supports us through uh, Chella Toys with the Mighty Media figures. Thank you to everybody who goes to our press and reviews. Uh, like I said, you folks are the ones who are helping keep the lights on and uh, the Mighty Media house uh, abode, so to speak. So, uh, nah, well, it's, we, it sounds like I'm sucking up, but, you know, it, it's quite literally the truth. We are nothing without the pots. So we appreciate all you. I, I second what Meanie's saying, um, and uh, we, we, we love the community that we've built, and we love interacting with you, so make sure to follow us on social media, at Mind of the Meanie, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook, it's all at Mind of the Meanie, uh, and make sure to check out our merchandise at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Blue Meanie, and ProWrestlingTees.com slash So Says Shurnoff. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube at youtube.com slash mind of the meanie. Hit like, hit subscribe, and hit that little bell. That's how you're going to know when uh, some new and exciting things come up. We've got the standalone interview with uh, Andrew from Wildcat Belts on there. A brand new episode of Talking with Friends uh, with myself and my brother Fred and Matt Mangle and Calvin Tan. That's up there now, too. We had a lot of fun uh, doing that. Um, and more to come always. Uh, Join us again every single Monday at 6 a.m. wherever you get your podcast, and every single Monday at 6 p.m. over on Fight for another trip into the mind. Blue, 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 blue world order. The world of MLW Radio never stops.